Ah, yeah. Welcome in. Welcome back to another episode of the Format Podcast. This is a, uh, well, responding to uh, arguably the greatest Super Bowl in Super Bowl history episode of the Format Podcast. Before we do that, you know what to do if you're here on YouTube. Go ahead, click that subscribe, that like, that notification bell. Really appreciate it. If you want the audio-only version, open up your audio podcast platform. Get it there. I'm not going to go into all the things. Just make sure you like, subscribe, make sure you share, click the bell, all that good stuff. But let's get right to it, man. Um, Just got finished watching Super Bowl 58, an incredible, incredible game, um, barn burner. And through most of the game, I'm sitting there watching, and I'm thinking the NFL probably really doesn't like this game because – I talk about it all the time, how the NFL tries to legislate defense out of the game. And um, it was a defensive struggle most of the way. But then the game got into overtime. The game was super exciting. The game was super tight. The 49ers scored on obviously on their first um, possession of overtime. And then literally at the buzzer, uh, Patrick Mahomes does what Patrick Mahomes does and we all want to call him Jordan-esque, and I guess it's a lot harder to win in football than it is in basketball. But the only reason I neg- I hesitate to call him Jordan-esque is obviously Jordan never uh, lost on the big stage. But Pat Mahomes is – he is very quickly climbing the quarterback all-time leaderboards. Um, He's going to have the numbers. He's going to have the winning. I mean, this guy in his first six years as a starter is a three-time Super Bowl champion. The, the Chiefs are now – Uh, back-to-back champions for the first time in the NFL since the old 304 Patriots, coincidentally, right? Because uh, I think last week I did a show talking about how the Chiefs are basically doing what the Patriots did and what we thought we'd never see again in terms of a dynasty. And it looks very much like that's possible. And the crazy part is the Chiefs are in line to possibly three-peat next year, something that no team in NFL history has ever done. And Here's the thing that we're looking at. This is what's so scary about the Kansas City Chiefs. If there was ever a time to get the Kansas City Chiefs, it was this year. It was this year. But when the offense slowed down and wasn't what it once was, the defense stepped up and became what it never has been. And that's the crazy part. Um, So I'm not going to get into too much X's and O's and breakdown, but I just I got to give props to the Chiefs for being back-to-back champions, and again, three times in six years. Um, Got to give props for Pat Mahomes being just the best player in the game, 34-46 tonight, 333 passing yards, two touchdowns. He had an interception. He got sacked three times, and we kept thinking, uh, is this it? Is this it? Is this the time that Kyle Shanahan is finally going to get over the hump? But Patrick Mahomes refused to allow it, and – I think that's kind of where the Jordan-esque commentary comes from when you talk about a guy like Pat Mahomes because Jordan kept a lot of great coaches and a lot of great players from ascending once he was on the mountaintop. And that's that's where that comes from. And it, and it looks like Mahomes is well on his way to doing that. Um, Now let's look at the other side of this. Brock Purdy, 23 of 38, 255 yards, one touchdown. Really solid game overall. Not an outstanding game, but a very solid game. Didn't turn the ball over. But if we're real, nobody expected him to outgun Patrick Mahomes, right? Nobody could have expected that. And that's absolutely understandable. He did what he could do. Um, Christian McCaffrey ran hard, uh, 22 carries for 80 yards. Also eight receptions for 80 yards. So 160 scrimmage yards for Christian McCaffrey. Had the 49ers won, he probably would have ended up being the um, the uh, MVP. Uh, then you look at a guy like uh, uh, Chris. Um, you look at a guy like uh, uh, I'm sorry, Chris Jones, defensively, who has been the catalyst defensively for the uh, Chiefs throughout these last four years. Pretty much, whenever they needed a play, he managed to make a play, and he was pretty much in Brock Purdy's lap all night long. Even though he didn't get a sack, he created so much pressure that made things so much harder for Brock Purdy. Um. Mike Shanahan, uh, I'm sorry, not Mike Shanahan, Kyle Shanahan, Mike Shanahan, his dad obviously has two Super Bowl championships with the Denver Broncos as a head coach. But Kyle Shanahan, widely regarded as one of the best offensive play callers, one of the best uh, play designers in football, in football, he's got to just be hurting. This is now the third time he couldn't close the deal 
with a double digit lead in the Super Bowl. Um, once, obviously, as an offensive coordinator for the Atlanta Falcons and now twice as head coach of the 49ers. And we know just how precious these opportunities to play in the Super Bowl are and how few and far between they can be. You can't count on getting back in the game of football. And you just got to wonder, you know, what can he do? Uh, how much better can this roster get? How much better can Brock Purdy get? I mean, it's only his second year, so you got to assume he's going to improve. But how much better overall can this roster get? You got to pay guys. You got to try to keep it together. You have salary cap concerns, et cetera, et cetera. Um, obviously, uh, Shanahan has to be crushed right now, and he's got to be asking himself, what more can I do to get over the hump? And I don't think it's a knock on you. The fact is, twice as a head coach, you've run into Andy Reid and Pat Mahomes. What are you going to do? That's like Jerry Sloan in the NBA. He's one of the all-time great. He was, excuse me, one of the all-time great head coaches. You have John Stockton, Carl Malone, one of the greatest one-two punches ever. What, back-to-back -back years, they ran into Michael Jordan in the finals, and that kept them from getting a championship. But anyway, um, this is this is not about that. You got to give props to the Chiefs. You got to talk about just how amazing they are. And again, again, Steve Spagnolo with another virtuoso defensive performance in the big game was able to come out with the win. And so just, you know, shouts to the Kansas City Chiefs. Congrats to everything that they've done. And um, Pat Mahomes, man, Pat Mahomes is, he is beyond special. I mean, the guy literally just took his team down the field and got the job done in every way conceivable. He got it done rushing. As a matter of fact, he led his team in rushing, nine carries, 66 yards. He got he got the job done rushing. He got the job done throwing. And when the game was on the line, he delivered the strike for the touchdown to close it out. And so, I mean, yeah, I, I guess that's it. Um, what I want to know from you at this point, uh, what, what do you think? Where does Patrick Mahomes rank in the pantheon of all-time great quarterbacks? Because we know that for the rest of this offseason, especially in the coming days and weeks, that is something that is going to be discussed. His level of greatness. Where does he rank? How good is he? How good is he going to be? Leave your comments in the comment section. Can't wait to hear from you. Can't wait to get back to you. And I'll be back with you on the next episode. And I'm out. Peace.